to say the mayor made an announcement yesterday that, and that Larry, you're probably familiar with this, there is a literacy initiative and a 100% graduation rate initiative. And the literacy initiative is having kids have a 1,000 words by third grade. And they're individualizing curriculum. They're looking at an individual child. They're not going to be in groups learning together. It's an individualized curriculum for each student. There's somebody going to be working out of the mayor's office, and it's with the Hoya Unites group as well, so it's a number of community-based organizations. And that group is also looking at 100% graduation rate and what do we need to do in order to keep kids in school. And you know, I went to a workshop a couple weeks ago on green jobs, and there, were, there was a speaker there that was talking about keeping, I see that if, if there's dropout in school, are people going to, are kids going to go into a job and drop out of a job? So how do you get children to stay in school to graduate and I ended up sitting next to the speaker at lunchtime and we had this conversation and he again talked about out of the box um, things to do and he said who are your uh, who are the kids looking at in the mall what are their favorite stores um, in the mall try to get whether it's Hollister or you know, American Eagle or the, any of the other stores going to those employers and say when you're hiring kids from Holyoke, ask them the question, uh, you know, are you in school? It, it's tied back to jobs and staying in school. So it's building a workforce for the future with those things that we had talked about uh, with, uh, you know, work ethic type thing. So there's a number of things that have been started and again, it goes back to um, action steps and, and moving forward. So. Um, we had a good start this morning, I think, good discussion, and uh, we're going to continue to move forward in that direction. Uh, so, Elaine? I'm sorry to keep interjecting, but Kip, you were mentioning the uh, issue with the, the gardening and food. Just last week, the Food Policy Council for the Commonwealth met here in Ohio, and there were three commissioners, John Auerbach from DPH, Julia Keogh from DTA, and Scott Soros from Agriculture. And part of the presentation for the day was from Diego from the Waste of Reuters, I'm afraid I don't know his last name. Uh, but it's also about the work with CESA, the work with fresh vegetables into the school systems, uh, working with DTA on people that are on the SNAP program, which uh, getting them into using the fresh foods, bringing this into the school departments, and uh, bringing it into the schools. One of the key things that came out over and over and over again was people for jobs, as what Kip is saying. But they're working, yeah, here's one of Larry's silos. They have no other information from what else is going on within the community. So it all gets back to that really important factor of communication. Um, those of us that are here have the luxury of hearing cavity on a regular basis, and Tim, what you've been doing has been terrific, but this information needs to go further. It needs to, um, you know, there, there is not a local media that is picking up on this on a regular basis and disseminating the information within the community. Um, some of the, the efforts that other communities have and work for, I mean, you can know, quite if you're lucky if you get a report I, I hate to say this, but in the Republican, it, but it's a 10-day ago meeting with, um, before it comes out. So the, the communication is really a very, very serious issue. There's a lot going on, and we need to disseminate that information. Um, of these three commissioners who were there, and they spent four hours together, that's a lot of brain power coming in from Boston for, for um, practically event, they had no concept of the rest of what was going on mm -hmm. within the community. And they were less than a block away from the big dig. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it's part of it. You know, it's interesting that um, we talk about jobs for people. One opportunity that's coming down the pipe that has the prospect of generating 
more jobs for more people than any other single opportunity that we've probably seen around here in a long, long time. But we don't talk about it very much um, because it generates a fair amount of uh, hostility in some folks' minds and uh, may have uh, impacts upon other businesses and the like. A, a casino is going to come to western Massachusetts and it may come right here to Holyoke and may, I, I know it's had some discussion in some venues. I know EDC has discussed it and the like. But I'm not aware that anybody has done any serious planning relative to this issue. You know, if it does come, whether it comes here to Holyoke or down 91 to Palmer, what are we going to do about all those jobs? And how are we going to try to ensure that at least some of those jobs, which aren't going to involve a college degree or maybe even a high school degree, come to folks who really need it, as opposed to folks from a Hartford or where have you. Um, and I understand why it doesn't get a lot of public discussion, um, but I think it should. And this is, or if not right here today, as we go forward with this plan, should be part of that discussion and plan. You know, Bill, this, I'm gonna, this is off point exactly to casinos precisely, but um, in, the, in the prep for the meeting that I was extremely happy to have with uh, Senator Hamlin, who presented his name last, last Friday, um, I, I reached out to John Goodyear from the Computing Center to say, you know, what's up and is there anything you'd like me to tell them about the center's construction? And uh, so I, I, if this was secret, he didn't put little dots next to it saying, please don't tell them people this. But uh, evidently Turner Construction, who's doing the construction on the site, um, who currently have around 62 people, are going to have a couple hundred people, I think Max had around 400 people doing construction on the site, um, often do uh, uh, training programs with uh, youth for construction jobs and maybe others too, but I mean, I, I, it, it wasn't a detailed description. But they do pro they support programs in communities in which they're operating large projects. And what I had heard from John Goodview was that Turner was going to look to to do a program like that or get into a conversation with a program like that uh, in Holyoke. Uh, I'm bringing that up because again I don't think it was secret, but I also know it wasn't nailed down. It's something that I think we should reach out. To, to John and others act, actively on to see what needs to be done to get that in place. The tie back to your comment, Bill, is that if you want people in the area to get these both construction jobs on the construction side, um, you need to make sure you have the training programs ready to go to get people in who aren't currently in those occupations. You probably work very closely with the Pioneer Valley Building Trades Council to make sure that you're well organized to do whatever you need to do to be in the pipeline for those jobs. Uh, and then put pressure, frankly, on whatever approval process locally is determined for those casinos to make sure there's some agreement around making sure that pipe is there. Because if there's a disconnect between the ability to execute and the pipeline of, of, of trained workers into it, then you're not going to have that connection. The nice thing about it is it's possible out of this process that might even get a training program up and running that could help facilitate people from Holio moving in to those jobs if they're forthcoming. I think that it's a good plan to be paying attention to this process. I think that the lead time from the time this bill is signed and the time the first groundbreaking of the casinos happens will be long enough uh, and the licensing process robust enough to build into it uh, an opportunity to identify what the jobs that are adults and training programs the group of people. Uh, it would be much easier to do that if there are guaranteed jobs in the pipeline. So I think that's that's an opportunity that people don't talk about too much yet because few shoes need to drop, but they're about to. And I think that's a good point to move the day attention to that process. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And I think if you look closely at the game with Joe, uh, when Joe Wagner was here last week, as I worked with him on the boat, uh, of course, he chaired the process. Uh, the fact that we have him in our backyard, I think, is going to be really important for us to be able to anticipate. And he told us very clearly he's going to work with us as this slowly becomes a reality and where it might be located. In that gaming bill, there are provisions for job training. There are uh, provisions for set aside and funding for career development within those jobs. I mean, I think one of the things that he said that made a lot of sense, Bill, was that uh, when they looked at gaming bills around the country, they gleaned from those bills the best of what they could find as it related to job creation and the preparation of people for jobs. So I think it makes a lot of sense for them in terms of current construction, which we're looking at already. <clears throat> and in terms of the gaming bill, that there are going to be some opportunities here for the people who we're thinking about it in the neighborhoods as well, where you have a 50% split. Yeah, one just FYI, Bill, there has been a group that we've staffed pro bono for two and a half years around Palmer, 14 municipalities, um, agnostic about the, the issue of gaming, totally on the issue of what is this going to mean to our communities, um, what are the impacts, positive or negative, and how to shape the legislation. A lot of the changes in that legislation have been shaped by that group of men and women have been at this for like two and a half years. So there is definitely some things that can be harvested out of that from, from Western Mass. Commission that's in the legislation. know if the host agreement has to be formed and agreed upon as they get to the commission? Are they looking at how those communities will benefit the best and so they'll pick a community according to that? I don't know where the sequence is. Yeah, as the application is made, they, the more that the host uh, speaks to the interest of the community that's hosting plus the butters. Presumably, their chances go up in terms of success. So we're getting close to our ending time. Are there any other comments or final thoughts from anyone? Um, so uh, speaking, I think I'll say this on behalf of Bob and myself and some other folks who were staffing this effort. I'm going to pat it's on the task force, but Bob, myself, Carlos, Jackie, we've had a, a group of our small team from uh, Westboro working on this project. And the one thing I really wanted to recognize and thank the community for was the task force members were involved in this, but there was over 100 other people through focus groups that we did all through the winter. Uh, and, and informal conversations, um, this, we would not have been able to get to this rich kind of thinking and, and uh, creativity without all of that participation that we found through the task force members and through other folks. Uh, so we, we have been, our whole effort has been from a staff point of view and dramatically enriched. I think Dan and Don and that whole team found this, had the same experience. Uh, and we're very appreciative and I think you should know that, you know, those scores and scores of people were engaged and are part of this document. Uh, and as everybody's recognized, Helene and everybody's recognized, we have a big challenge to 
open up a communication process so people can know what we're doing and moving ahead. I guess I'd like to uh, close and um, just thank each of you um, uh, sincerely for your time, for your energy, and uh, especially for your candor. Um, I would hope as you went out of here today, you would feel a lot of uh, pride um, and satisfaction in you know, what we've accomplished. We're, undeniably, we're not done, but uh, I feel like we've made a terrific start. Um, one of the earliest meetings that we convened, um, uh, I'm recalling, I said um, something that I'm thinking as we sit here today, and that is, there was a moment in time over 100 years ago that Hoyoke was arguably the most powerful economic um, city in the universe, uh, largely triggered by water power, but as John and I would tell you, more the success was that this city was the first plant industrial city um, in the United States. Um, it seems to me uh, it's almost back to the future. Um, this is another opportunity where a bunch of folks sit around and think about what the plan for the 21st century is, um, uh, and that we don't leave the folks that happen to uh, look different than they did 100 plus years ago uh, behind. But uh, to keep to your point, they're part of the success story that um, is waiting to happen. So I feel pretty good uh, about where we're all, where we've been, where we're going. Um, proof would be in the pudding when we start having to put those metrics to all those strategies, but um, I'm fairly pretty good about it, and I think that you should all feel pretty good that where we've gotten this far with the help of the administration, with the help of MTC, and all those folks that were alluded to a moment ago. So thank you all. I, I also, on behalf of the city of Hoyoke, need to thank each and every one of you. Um, I, I really um, feel blessed, um, despite the family um, yeah. comments. I probably see you more than I see my family. <laughs> um, and I especially want to thank Bill and Bob and Pat Larkin and Eric Nakajima for the support that they've given the city, and especially Governor Patrick as well. Um, it's, you know, we can't do this alone. Um, and it takes a team to build um, what we're doing. And so on behalf of the city of Hoyoke, I do want to thank each and every one of you for your participation and your guidance and your support. And I look forward to that continuing. So thank you. Thank you. You've done good. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.